scientific visualization is essentially an image or a video that conveys some type of information, some type of scientific data. Now, scientists use scientific visualizations in order to better understand their data and to share their information with others. Now, it's worth noting that there's a difference between an animation and a visualization. An animation is gener generally uh, conceptual in nature, whereas a visualization is data-driven. We're using actual information to drive these graphics. So the data that we use for our visualizations generally comes from NASA missions, from different satellites or aircraft that's flown. The purpose of all these different satellites is to study our Earth, to study uh, the, the saltiness of the ocean, the, the, the temperature of the ocean, the, the precipitation rates that we get, in order to better understand the Earth that we live in. So this visualization shows dust from Africa being swept up into the atmosphere where it travels across the Atlantic Ocean to South America. And so on these, these walls here, you're seeing data that was collected from NASA's Calypso satellite. For this particular data set, the scientist was, uh, was very interested in showing the altitude of the dust. This was something that was relatively new where we could actually see the distribution of the dust through the entire air column. Uh, before, we were just looking at 2D images, and you could see that there was dust there, but you couldn't see the altitude above the ground. So this data set came from NASA's Aquarius satellite, which measures sea surface salinity, or basically how salty the very top of the ocean is. Red sections are areas that are very salty, where blue sections are less salty and more like fresh water. Uh, now, one of the interesting examples here is we can see this kind of plume of blue water that comes out of South America. Now, this is the Amazon River right here. And so you see these seasonal flows of fresh water flowing up into the Atlantic Ocean. Um, another interesting note here is that at least the surface of the ocean, the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean is much saltier than the Pacific Ocean. And one of the reasons that, uh, we believe this is is because we get a lot of rain in this region of, of the Pacific Ocean. So this is an example of a visualization that depicts a complex data set uh, where we may not have noticed some patterns just looking at the raw data, but when we visualize it like this, we can start to see different features, different relationships that we may not have noticed. This visualization shows a typhoon approaching the Philippines, uh, and the data set that we're showing is from the Global Precipitation Measurement Satellite, which flew over the top of the storm and recorded precipitation rates within the storm. So the colors here represent precipitation, either frozen or liquid. The reds and the greens indicate intense rain, while the purples and the blues represent uh, frozen precipitation like snow or sleet. Uh, now one of the interesting things about this visualization is when we come down to the side view, you can see there's, there's this there's boundary layer, this line right here. Now this is where the frozen precipitation is changing from, from snow, from sleet, into rain. Now the reason why this type of information is important is because uh, it allows scientists to see inside storms and see the structures inside storms to see how, how the precipitation moves within a storm. All this information gives scientists a better idea of how storms evolve. Uh, and the important part of this is that this helps with storm prediction. So my original plan when I went to school for aerospace engineering uh, was that I think like all aerospace engineers, I either wanted to build spacecraft or be an astronaut. Uh, but I decided that later on in my career, later on in, uh, in school, I was more interested in computer graphics. And so I kind of ended up going down a different path, uh, getting into computer animation, um, computer modeling, 3D modeling. Uh, and then I kind of in a roundabout way ended up back at NASA anyways when I realized that they had a, a visualization studio uh, that was perfectly in line with the type of work that I like to do. So I had subscribed to a, uh, an email thread that shared jobs once a month that were uh, in the computer graphics industry. And most of them were out in California, you know, either working for movie studios or for video game studios. And I was surprised when one from NASA showed up and it was for the scientific visualization studio. And it was exactly the type of work that I liked doing and really enjoyed doing. So I applied and uh, I got accepted. One of the challenges for us is, is trying to find the balance between art and engineering. Um, you know, these visualizations we create, they're based on very, very complex concepts. Uh, and it can be very difficult to try to, to present that information in a way that's interesting, that's easy to understand, uh, and that people enjoy looking at. I mean, that's, that's one of the challenges about this job that I like the most, is I'm taking you know, a data set that's just a list of numbers that may not seem very interesting, but when you present that in a way that, that looks beautiful with, with you know, the right colors, the right camera angles, you know, people get excited about the data, people get excited about the science. I'd say one piece of advice I would give is that uh, really just pursue what you're interested in doing. Um, things may not make sense while you're doing them, but if it's something you're interested in, you're going to be really good at it. And chances are, later on in your career, you'll be able to find something that kind of connects the dots and really makes sense. So don't feel like you have to go down one path just because that's, that's the path that seems to make sense. I'd say go after what you're interested in uh, and, and make sure you enjoy what you do.